14 years ago, I made this custom fiberglass subwoofer enclosure. And my friends, I definitely made some big mistakes. But learning from those mistakes is what is important. So if you wanna build your own custom fiberglass subwoofer enclosure, I definitely recommend checking this out because we're gonna be going full in detail into all these build pictures and analyzing what I would do differently knowing what I now know today. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's dive on in and check it out. All right guys, so we're here on the computer now. Let's start taking a look at these pictures and the first picture I have in my build pictures here for this build is this right here. So we've started making the skeleton for this fiberglass enclosure. And if you've never worked with fiberglass before to create these kind of old school volcano style boxes, what you would do is you would make basically a skeleton. You're gonna have a couple of wooden rings to hold your subwoofers or amplifiers or whatever other gear. And then you're gonna have other areas of the box built into this. So areas like your port, and then obviously the top and bottom and sides of the enclosure. And then you're gonna use a stretchy material to stretch and basically make a surface between these different areas. Now, if you are doing this style of fabrication, a couple of really good things that you wanna do that I did here right off the bat, even only being into car audio for a couple of years at this point is you're going to want to make sure that you kind of plan for where you're going to attach this stretchy material to all the different pieces of wood. And what I've done to plan for that is you can see I've used a round over bit on the router and I've intentionally went a little bit deeper than you normally would into the wood, which leaves sort of a little groove that you guys can see there around each of these pieces. The advantage of adding this groove is when we go to stretch this material, we have one, an area that we can cut the material and have a nice perfect transition between the material and our other surface. But it's also nice when we have that groove there, it allows us to have that stretchy material and then all of the fiberglass materials and then the body filler all kind of build up to match this surface here. So rather than just going over the top of the surface and then trying to sand down through all of those different materials to get everything nice and flush, all those materials are gonna build up to the same level and be just as flush. Now something I do notice right away, just from my experience level now, is I can tell that this groove probably isn't as deep as it needed to be. Let's find out if that's a correct analysis. So in the next picture here, we're looking at the back side of the enclosure. And the nice thing about this enclosure, the way that I kind of built this, I was able to leave the back side of the enclosure off of the enclosure while I was working on the fiberglass process, which is great because that allowed me to reach the inside of the enclosure easily. And hopefully we'll be applying some fiberglass materials on the inside as well to add some additional strength. Now, again, this was about 14 years ago and knowing what I know now, I can tell just by looking at this port that this was probably a pretty short port so it's probably tuned pretty high uh, typically nowadays I would expect to see a little bit lower tuning frequency if I had to guess I don't know for sure but I would say this is probably tuned in like the 35 to 40 Hertz range so not horrible but you know it really does depend on the subwoofer you're using and your system goals for the application but I would say this is probably tuned a little bit high. Another thing I don't really like here, not a huge deal, but kind of using those screws to hold everything together. Really, you just need to clamp these different pieces of wood together and allow them to dry. You're really gonna get the most strength by using the wood glue between the different pieces of material. Not a huge deal because you can't see these screws, but they are a little close to where that round over needed to be. So it looks like I had to sink them in a little bit deeper than normal. Just something different that I would do nowadays is not even use the screws. I would rely on the wood glue and a good clamping method to keep everything good and strong. You can also see, it looks like I used hot glue to hold these different pieces of the skeleton together. Nothing wrong with that. When you are building these skeletons for fiberglass, it's nice to use hot glue because you can kind of adjust things as need be while that glue is setting and make sure that everything is good and symmetrical. Something else I noticed on my router work is, you know, this is back in the era when I didn't have any templates and I was doing everything with a jigsaw and then kind of sanding everything smooth. And you could definitely spend some more time to get your initial shape a lot smoother. And the other thing that's nice about using templates is if you used you know, one on this side, you could flip it over and use one on this side. A way you could get around not using templates is you could use a jigsaw to make your own template and then flush trim it on each side. So you've kind of made sure that you have the exact same shape. If I had to guess, I probably just 
you know, eyeballed this, and this is a pretty complex curve to get symmetrical on each side. So it doesn't look horrible. I'm sure I did exactly copy the top to the bottom by the looks of it. I can see the small imperfections carry over from top to bottom, but you know, nevertheless, for what we were working with at the time, it's not too bad. I do notice that I use these strips of wood for the skeleton, which is a good idea because with a straight piece of wood like this, you could measure like an offset for how far each of these rings is sticking out. And I will say the rings themselves do look good and symmetrical. It looks like I matched up that kind of inset angle. That's something you definitely want to pay attention to whenever you have two of anything in a build, you want it to be perfectly symmetrical because if it's not, it's very easy to detect with your eye. So moving on here, I've now cut the material at at this stage of the build so I've trimmed it away obviously we haven't done any fiberglass yet remember that when you're doing fiberglass builds like this this volcano style you're adding the strength with the fiberglass resin and the fiberglass itself and we'll be talking about that in a second a couple of things I notice on my stretch material here one there's a couple of areas where you know I didn't get a really good clean cut on the edge of the material and the reason for that is I probably was just using a dull knife always 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 use an ulfa knife and snap off the ends if you can whenever you make a new cut whenever you're starting to cut a new piece of material like this just so you get that nice pristine cut edge because otherwise you're going to have little areas like this where it sticks up and that's just going to take extra time once you load that up with the fiberglass resin and you start having to sand through the other thing a couple of staples aren't quite sunk down like they should be uh, you can use like a nail set that they use for uh, trim molding to set the trim nails. You could use that to kind of get that guy down in there if your pneumatic or electronic stapler didn't completely seat the staple down into the wood. The other thing I would definitely change is I'm sure I bought this material because it was probably, you know, on clearance or the cheapest material. This has some like stitching into it. And, you know, obviously it's not a big deal because you're not going to see any of these Halloween faces once the build is complete because you're going to be applying body filler and all the resin and everything. But it does add some inconsistencies to the shape that if you were trying to get everything perfect, you just wouldn't want those to be there. Just splurge, you know, it probably would have cost maybe like a dollar more to just get a solid piece of the felt material. Something else I noticed is you can see the chatter marks, the like tooth marks. I honestly don't think those are from a jigsaw. I might, I think that that might have been from a router. I was obviously using a router at this point in my build career because I have the round over to edges, and I'm sure I tried to use a router to cut these out because they do look pretty round. But I must have had some, you know, tooling issues with whatever I was using for my circle cutting at the time. Not a huge deal. It's still round enough that you know you're not going to have any sealing issues or anything on the subwoofer. But Ideally, if you're striving for perfection, which I do nowadays, you would want this to be nice and clean. Now, just so you know, I think some of these pictures are a little bit out of order. Obviously, this picture here, I hadn't cut away the material from the subwoofers yet, but look, I knew it. See, there's that knife right there. This was probably a dull blade. I mean, you could see the corner of it, the tip right there is actually like kind of rounded off, so it probably wasn't very sharp. Always either use a brand new blade if you have this style of razor blade or like I said earlier, I prefer using an Ulfa knife so that you can always be snapping off and easily have a new tip for your blade ready to go. Looks like some odd staple action there kind of shooting through. So make sure your staples are shooting through perfectly into the wood. So now you can see things are starting to look a little bit messy here. And this is why I always tell people, <laughs> if you're going to do this style of build, the, the volcano style fiberglass enclosures, prep is key and a couple of things i should have done to better prepare here are these first of all it would have been nice if i would have applied some painter's tape or something on the top here to kind of protect this surface there's no reason to have any resin on this top surface here it doesn't necessarily hurt anything because you know you can sand back down through it and maybe i'm going to have a cover panel on top anyway so you won't see it but just to keep things as clean as possible and to avoid that extra work, apply painter's tape anywhere you don't want the resin. The same goes for the inside of the port here. With that little bit of resin spot down there, now when I go to paint the port, this spot is definitely going to look different than this spot just because that wood will kind of inhale some of the paint and have more of a dull look, whereas the resin is going to have more of a glossy look. So I would either need to fix that and sand down through it or I would need to completely resin inside of here. 
you know, and that's kind of a, a waste of materials, applying all that resin when, remember, the resin alone doesn't add any strength. It's the combination of the resin and the chop mat. So just a couple of things to consider there. Another thing I notice right away is you can see all these light spots here. Those light spots are where air is trapped within the fiberglass layup. So what that means is when I was applying this fiberglass chop mat, I wasn't completely wetting it out by dabbing it with the resin uh, using a brush and because of that, I ended up with some air pockets, which obviously can lead to strength issues. It can also lead to cracking in this surface if it gets pressed on the wrong way. So you definitely wanna have that completely wet out. Another good tool that you can use to do so is use an actual dedicated fiberglass roller. These have like these metal ridges on them and you go back and forth over the resin while it's still wet. And it really just helps work out all those air bubbles so that you don't have that issue. Now, another thing on the rings here, ideally, this is what I was talking about earlier, and you can see it on the top as well. It looks like I didn't go deep enough with that groove that I was telling you guys about at the beginning of the video, because you can see some of my fiberglass materials had to go over this surface already. Ideally, you want that groove so deep that you're just building up those fiberglass materials to the edge and then you're going to even have a little bit of height still to fill up with the body filler. So this groove was definitely not deep enough and the issue here is now because of all this fiberglass material on the top of the enclosure and on the top of the rings, if I wanna get those surfaces back to completely flat, I'm gonna have to spend gobs and gobs of time sanding back down through everything. What a waste. Who wants to go through all that effort? Just prepare things correctly from the beginning and have that gap nice and deep so that you don't have to do that. The other thing is obviously like for the subwoofer, I'm gonna have to go through the process of trimming away all this fiberglass chop mat. What a pain, my friends, do the prep work. If we zoom in, I have some resin and chop mat applied on the inside of the enclosure as well. Now, something I notice right away is it looks like I spent a lot of time you know, making sure that I was getting a good bond between my shaped surface and the subwoofer ring by working the material into this groove and corner down here, which is a good thing. But the problem is, if we zoom in here, I have some resin and chop mat applied on the inside of the enclosure as well, which is always a good thing, especially because I wanna make sure that I have a really good bond between my subwoofer mounting ring and this fiberglass surface here. So to ensure that, I work up the fiberglass and basically build these two surfaces together and combine them with all those materials. Now the problem is though, see this area here? This is definitely a big air bubble. And if you have a big air bubble like that, it's gonna add some strength, but not as much strength as if your stuff looks like it does right here, where it's nice and worked in. Now something else I noticed right away, see this light area of the orange? That's probably because I didn't get enough resin there. And the other thing is, I was probably kind of being a little bit cheap on materials and not using as much as I should. It would definitely be a good idea to not only combine this wood to this fiberglass surface here, but also combine this wood of the box itself to the fiberglass surface. Rather than counting on the outsides where I'm ultimately gonna be sanding away and you really don't have much connection between where that groove is for the round over part on the outside, I could work up a ton of fiberglass on the inside here and not have to worry about sanding through it and it would add a ton of strength between all those surfaces, locking everything together. But judging by these pictures, I don't think I did that. So I lit that resin cure and again, yeah, I definitely did not do that because you can see right here, there is no bond at all of resin you know, between the inside of the box and that wooden surface. I had so much opportunity there to do so but for whatever reason, I did not. It looks like I focused more on the outside. And now you can see we have a really, really poor body filler layup. So again, don't forget, this was 14 years ago, only a couple of years into my fabrication career, if you will, and uh, yeah, it shows. You can tell that this is definitely one of the first times I used body filler. A couple of things I noticed right away is, you know, obviously there's a ton of like pinholes going on. There's a ton of like clumps, and this is probably an indication of mixing the body filler too hot. In other words, adding too much hardener into the body filler or not spreading the body filler fast enough and uh, maybe even making too large of a batch when I went to start spreading it. You definitely want to have a nice 
smooth spread. Obviously, you're going to see some ridges before you go in and sand, but this is this is pretty atrocious. Again, I just want to point out that prep work is absolutely key when doing these kinds of enclosures. You can see I had to put the body filler all the way over the edge to kind of try to smooth this out. In reality, this is going larger than this this surface here, and I'm gonna have to try to like blend it so it's not really perfectly flat anymore. The same for the bottom and tops of the enclosure. Do your planning ahead of time so that you have a nice deep groove. The other thing, I probably shouldn't have carried this groove over to the ported section when I was doing my round over because you see now I had to like kind of try to come back and fix it with the body filler. So again, avoid that time plan properly a couple of other pictures here of the horrible body filler yeah not the best in the world and you can see so even once I started sanding you know it starts to get a little bit smoother and it looks like at this point I put some port paint on there if you will but again all that fiberglass over the edge of the surface there it's not going to lead to a perfectly flat surface it would have been better to have that wood exposed and everything else built up to the edge maybe even have the rings a little bit larger so that you have more of the a mounting area for the subwoofer to make contact to if we look over here definitely some areas that still needed to be built up on the box but i think i got to this point and this was basically the smoothest that it ever got and then here's where I decided to try something different. I think we've all been there. When you're learning something new, you sometimes have to try something that's a little bit outside the box. And sometimes you have to fail to learn a lesson that that probably wasn't a good idea. So in this case here, I don't know if this was a huge fail because I feel like I was kind of masking the fail of not getting a perfectly sanded surface on that body filler. And what I decided to do is I applied this fabric material on these surfaces here that would be underneath the final vinyl upholstery. I think my thought process here is it would give the vinyl that sort of soft touch feel and this really isn't the best way to do this and the other advantage for me using it on this application is it kind of masked all the really bad body work. Not completely but somewhat so Knowing what I know now, it would definitely be better to, you know, just completely sand those areas and get them nice and smooth. But let's see how this turned out. Again, definitely using a very dull knife to cut the material, which left to this really, really poor edge here. I think this is actually the factory edge of the material, and I just lined it up when I used like a spray glue or whatever to hold this in place. But nevertheless, let's see how it turned out. So at this point now, I've actually mounted the subwoofers here. And if my memory serves me correctly, these are a couple of MTX T4512s. And speaking of subwoofers, I do want to take a quick second to thank our channel sponsor, Audio Control. So Audio Control has a wide variety of different subwoofer amplifiers available, but what makes these amplifiers unique is these essentially have an advanced line output converter built in. The high level inputs allow us to easily tap into the factory speaker level signal and use that signal to provide bass to our aftermarket system. But one of the best features on these amplifiers is Audio Control's proprietary AccuBase technology. With a factory car audio system, a lot of times as you turn up the volume, they will actually roll off the bass so the bass won't get as loud as you turn up that volume and the reason they do that is they want to protect their inexpensive stock speakers but obviously when you're upgrading your car audio system you're adding subwoofers and amplifiers that are capable of handling that bass as you turn up the volume so the AccuBase allows you to basically counteract that roll off as you turn up the volume it's definitely a great feature to have on your subwoofer amp I definitely recommend checking out audio control next time you guys are picking out a subwoofer amplifier if you guys want to learn more about their product line or check out some of the review videos I've done on those amps, check out the links down in the video description. So getting back into it here, I will say that the shape of this enclosure actually turned out pretty cool. I like how it looks. It does actually look fairly symmetrical, which is hard to do with these subwoofer enclosures that are made from fiberglass. But let's see. So it looks like I applied some additional paint on the inside of the port here, which is good so that, you know, if you're looking in from the angle, you can't see any uh, any of the wooden areas. 
But the problem is definitely, you know, there's that resin that we were talking about on the bottom before. It looks like I didn't even really bother to sand it. Definitely some roughness going on on the inside of this port. Looks like another little resin strip right here and right here. Not that you would see that one, but this one you could definitely see. So prep work is key. Definitely guard that all with some painter's tape while you're doing the fiberglass process. Pull it all off and have a nice perfect wood surface to apply that paint to once you need to. Here's a backside shot of the subwoofer. Again, would have loved to see some more fiberglass combining these surfaces together to add that strength, but nevertheless, it is what it is. So here we are now in the vehicle, and you can see if we uh, advance here, it looks like, you know, I did do a pretty good job of making sure that the side pieces matched up to the edge of the vehicle. Uh, critique that I have here is it looks like the top surface of the enclosure is just ever so slightly taller than that seam line there. It would have been nice if that seam line combined. And I'm sure this is because I probably had to make this a certain height to allow enough room for the subwoofers themselves. But a way I could have kind of got around that is rather than having this part here be perfectly straight and flat across, I could have had it kind of arc down to combine to that seam line and then account for that on the top piece here and have it mesh together. But nevertheless, it doesn't look horrible. It matches the edges of the vehicle pretty well. And now you can see I'm starting to rough fit the top pieces of the enclosure here. Now a couple of things right off the bat. It looks like I did a good job matching the edges. Not, not perfect, but not horrible. But something I noticed right away is, you know, rather than making this out of one piece of wood, which I probably would not have been able to do because you probably wouldn't be able to get this piece in here if it was a solid piece. It looks like I made it out too, but I put the seam right in the middle. And I always tell guys this, avoid having any seams in the middle of the enclosure. The problem with having a seam at the middle of the enclosure like this is your eye is just immediately drawn to it. Anytime there's something in the middle of something that kind of separates two things, your eye just gets drawn right to it and it kind of ruins the design of your build. To illustrate the better way to do this, I want to take a look at this picture. This is one of my more recent builds on the channel. And by the way, you can see every single step of the process for making this. I've got it all documented in video here on the channel. What I did here is I broke things into thirds. So basically, I had to have, you know, separate pieces here in order to get everything into this trunk area of this Jeep Wrangler. So rather than splitting anything down the middle, I broke it into thirds. I have this middle section here where everything is nice and symmetrical, and then I have two symmetrical sections on each side. I also like how on this build, I combined the top piece here with this front piece. This was definitely complicated to wrap with the different wrap materials to get everything looking perfect, but it hides this top edge here. You kind of had to have some sort of seam somewhere anyway. I could have probably combined these into a single piece. It would have been difficult to do so. I don't know if it would have fit in exactly like I wanted to, but I don't think it looks bad like that. And I just wanted to point this out, this kind of front area combination because we'll talk about it in a second. Now the reason I was applying this top piece here was to come up with sort of an amplifier rack. Got the amplifier going to be mounted in the middle here and I know this is a question that always comes up. Can you mount your amplifier on the subwoofer enclosure? I have a full video about my opinions on that here on the channel as well. But you can see I've added some beauty panels on the left and right and then one on the middle. I added this kind of odd shaped one in the middle just to protect and cover that seam so that you wouldn't see it as much. I'm not a big fan of the shape of that. I think it looks kind of weird. Whereas I actually like these side ones. I think I did a pretty good job of you know coming up with a unique design there and did a good job of keeping everything symmetrical. Again, probably by using a flush trim bit and you know making the one side first and then just copying it to the other side so that they are a perfect match. So now what I've done is use some body filler to start to mold these in and basically create an insert for those different pieces to sit down inside of. It would have been a good idea to apply some painter's tape around the edges here. And obviously painter's tape has a straight edge. I would build up some extra in the corner here and then just use a sharp knife to cut a nice rounded edge. And basically by doing that, when I apply my body filler, I would leave a, you know, like let's say an inch gap 
from the edge of this piece to where my tape started. And the tape would basically be the same shape as our insert here, but it would protect you know, all this extra body filler from being applied on the wooden surface. And also what you can do is you could work that body filler just barely up to the edge of the tape, just so it's barely covering that edge. And while the body filler is still wet, you would pull off the tape and then you just have a small little edge that you can kind of work down in with sandpaper rather than having to kind of randomly sand. It just gives you a much better guide to laying that body filler and keeping everything nice and consistent as you go around the piece. Now the other problem, you can see the body filler is definitely chipping away in a lot of these areas here. And the reason for that is, you know, I just didn't build up enough filler and it was built too high where I have kind of this weird edge. I think I sanded a lot of this down because it looks like it's, you know, taller than the insert itself. So I'm sure I kind of sanded part of it away, but I can just tell from looking at this, I'm sure I had a hard time doing so. It would have been better to just build it up just to the top of these pieces. And I'm sure a lot of the reason that this looks weird like this is I had already applied a round over to these insert pieces. Whereas it would have been better if I had already done that, I should have copied these insert pieces to a flat piece of wood, build up the body filler to the top of that flat piece of wood, which is perfect because you have a nice hard angle at the edge of the piece that you could build the body filler to. By trying to build it up to the edge of a round over piece, uh, you know, you just end up with an inconsistency there. But keep in mind, these pieces do pop out, so I must have protected the inside pieces with you know, painter's tape and some foam tape to give myself a gap between the edge of the insert piece and the inside of the body filler. And obviously in these pictures, all that protective material is removed because I knew that at some point I wanted to wrap them with different materials like we see here. So I didn't have any other pictures of the wrapping process. We got to this point here. But you can see, definitely like I mentioned before, it's kind of inconsistent in the height of where all that body filler was chipping away. I did a decent job of smoothing it out, but it's definitely not perfect. Remember how we had that seam in the front there? It looks like to kind of cover it up, I basically just took a piece of like a folded piece of material that's the same material as this suede here and kind of just wrapped it around there. That's definitely not the best way to go about doing that. Looks like I kind of have a weird corner going on over there. Again, this is why it's always, always important to plan for your wrapping materials ahead of time. If you guys watch some of my full builds here on the channel, I always talk about the best ways to do that. You know, planning where you're gonna have uh, different seams and different areas for that material to wrap around. I think if, if I had to build like this same exact shape enclosure again and put the amp here again, I would probably add more of a gap between you know, the bottom of this amplifier rack and the top of the enclosure and kind of had some have something obviously hide that gap. You wouldn't see the gap in the front. But the reason I'd want a little bit of a gap is so I could run the wiring directly down into this panel and then underneath to wherever it needs to go rather than just kind of draping it over the top here. And uh oh guys, I see a, I see a zip tie that I don't like. Here it is guys, anytime we are cutting a zip tie, we always want to make sure that we cut it flush with that square head of the connector. Use a really nice pair of flush trim cutters so you can get it nice and flush because yeah, you don't want this thing accidentally jabbing you or whatever. And it just doesn't look nearly as good as it should. Ideally, all this wiring would just immediately terminate down into the piece of wood and you would never even see these zip ties anyway. But even behind the scenes, this is just unfinished. Don't leave these zip ties like this. Now there's definitely a couple other things down here that stand out to me that I don't really like. Let me know if you guys see what those are. Here's kind of a beauty shot from the back side here. Subwoofers look pretty good. Again, I actually kind of like the shape of this enclosure. I don't think the shape is too bad. I think it turned out pretty good for working with what I had to work with at the time. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the overall shape of this? And what do you think about this build for, you know, being somebody who's only been into car audio for like two or three years at this point? If you would like to see some more advanced custom subwoofer box builds being done step by step on video, definitely check out the other related videos and the playlists that we have here on the channel. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And next time you need a subwoofer amplifier for your car audio project, definitely check out our show sponsor, Audio Control. You can learn more about their lineup at the links down in the video description. A thanks to them along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching.